Welcome back. This video will take you through um, the second part of this homework assignment, which was to draw a mitochondrion and to consider the different energy sources that can be used to make ATP. So this is really fun stuff because basically our body is amazing and able to use carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins to make ATP, whatever it needs at the moment. So um, the first thing I have here in pink is that carbs can be used to make ATP. Uh, basically, glucose, which is a simple sugar, can be broken down by the process of glycolysis into pyruvate. And then um, pyruvate is converted into something called acetyl-CoA, which I don't have shown on this page. And then that can be um, used by the mitochondrion to make ATP. So that's step number one is all of the carbohydrates in your diet can be used to make ATP. Step number or process number two would be the using of lipids in order to make ATP. So lipids get broken down into their monomers, their building blocks of glycerol and fatty acids. And then those fatty acids in green right here can be um, converted in also into acetyl-CoA, also not shown here. And that can be used to make ATP inside the mitochondrion. And if there's not adequate glucose around, then our bodies are very versatile. That's really no problem for them. And over the course of a few days, then they can build up the enzymes that help them get better at this process called ketogenesis. And they break down fatty acids into the smaller structures called ketones. And the amazing thing about ketones is they can go straight into the mitochondria. It's not necessary for them to be converted into anything else. So then they can be used to make ATP. What makes this something special and why nutritional ketosis has been used to treat things like cognitive decline or Parkinson's or um, epilepsy and maybe some other diseases that we haven't studied yet, these ketones can diffuse right into the mitochondrion and they do not have and so even if someone has what's called mitochondrial dysfunction, as we're finding out a lot of diseases have, the ketones can be used to make ATP and give them much needed energy. So it's kind of an exciting area of research. Okay, then the third um, way that we can make ATP is with protein. So those proteins are made of their monomers, which are amino acids. And first, our very lovely liver has to deaminate the amino acids. So that means take the nitrogen off. See that nitrogen there? Get rid of the nitrogen with an enzyme called deaminase. And you end up with this deaminated amino acid, which can go into the mitochondrion and be converted, uh, or and in that process, be used to make ATP. And again, acetyl-CoA is often a mid-step here that I've left off of this picture for simplicity's sake. Um, and then you end up with a waste product, ammonia. We ha That's a nitrogenous waste, and we have to get it out of our body. So the liver then converts ammonia into a bigger nitrogenous molecule called urea. And um, the kidney, so then that goes back into the bloodstream, and then the kidney excre excretes these nitrogenous wastes, such as urea, uric acid and creatinine, which are all similar nitrogenous um, based compounds, and those get excreted in the urine. Okay, I'll stop there and go on to the next page. What is the next one? Oh, the cell membrane. This one's pretty quick. Okay, so I this is we've done this a lot now, but just a review that um, your cell membranes have a variety of structures in them. So first of all, they're made of this phospholipid bilayer that has a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. So the tails point toward each other, the heads point away. They have lots of proteins embedded in them. Some integral proteins that go all the way through can function as channel proteins. And then we have a lot of proteins on the surface too. Some of these are peripheral proteins and um, that serve as receptors, or perhaps some of them also have sugars attached, so then they're called glycoproteins, and they can function as antigens or other important communication um, services on the surface of the cell membrane. Okay, I'm going to come back to this one in the next video because this one's a lot.